Have you ever wondered what it's like to train as a student pilot or want to become a commercial pilot yourself? I'm currently studying for my ATPL, my air transport pilot license here in the UK. And whilst it has given me some of the most amazing memories to date, it's not quite Emirates Flight Training Academy. So YouTube and aviation guru Sam Chewy has just released a video giving us a tour of Emirates Flight Training Academy in the UAE. And today as a student pilot, I'm going to be watching it for the first time so you guys can get to see my reaction and what I think of it. And also I can be comparing it to what my training has been like so far in the UK. And if you do enjoy, remember to hit that thumbs up button and remember to subscribe. So let's get into the video. Alright, V1 and rotate. Rotate. Raise the nose. It feels so different. Yeah, it feels so, so much different. It's so solid. Town Dubai is always amazing. Just looks like something out of Star Trek. Little flare and freeze. Just freeze. Let the airplane touch down. Easy. Oh, wow. This is different than any traditional flying school. This is an academy that's built for an airline. Pilots. Uh, we can actually reduce the power. We, can... we take people right at the beginning and we train them all the way from zero hours to get an integrated ATPL and then we send them off to their hopefully to an airline job. Uh, the assessments are not easy. It not is easy. Difficult, yeah, because we have a lot of exams to do before we can get into the institute. This Having is a... your accommodation yeah, here? Yeah, this is my room. Wow. Just off of the introduction alone, there are some awesome things. Firstly, we can see their flying SR-22s as the single planes. They are nice aircraft. Here we fly DA-40s, which also are great aircraft. They do the job. We have G-1000s in them, which are absolutely awesome. And then for our twins, we fly da 42 still piston planes. Here they look like they're flying Phenom 100s or something crazy like that. I mean, the fact just to fly a jet just... Just on the twin and your training alone, it just absolutely blows my mind. Firstly, it must not be cheap at all. That must be so expensive to run. But I guess that's just the perks and I assume it's going to be a lot more to pay. I guess we'll find out later in the video. Pretty taxi. Yeah, so you can uh, it's a little bit of power for the alternator. So we're now turning right onto Alpha. Okay. So we go this way now, that's Alpha right. 7. That's right. Alpha 15 November, Roger. Taxi Alpha, Alpha 7 holding points, runway 31. So by the looks of it, I'm not completely sure, but I believe they have their own private airfield as well. A real luxury, that is pretty cool. So I currently fly out of Oxford Airport, and the benefits of that are you, ha you, you understand what it's like to not fly out of a private airport. You have jets coming in all the time, you have other people who are doing training there. You get a real idea what it's like to fly at a normal airport. But to have your own private airfield means there's no delays, you always get clearances and stuff like that. That is definitely a perk. So Petrus, uh, when did a student actually get into the series to fly? Sam, the cadets do 90 odd weeks of uh, ground school, followed by uh, the technical ground school for the Cirrus aircraft, and then they start uh, with the actual aircraft flying. So in that clip there, he said they do 90 weeks of ground school. Now, that is definitely a lot. I'm not sure if he means 90 weeks of training overall, and he just misspoke. But 90 weeks of ground school is just crazy. Here in the UK, we do six months approximately of ground school if you pass all your exams first time, that is. Some people do a few extra weeks just in case they fail in the exam and have to resit. But normally, it's not a lot over six months. Can't lie, one other thing about the SR-22s, those seatbelts look so uncomfortable. Now, I, can't, I haven't actually ever flown one, so I can't complain. But in the DA-40s, we just have like a normal seatbelt just like you'd get in a car. But they do look really uncomfortable. Make sure you're not on the brakes right now. That was a 3 4 right, right. Academy, so uh, good morning into the control zone by Oscar. And you can hear just that instructor giving him little tips just on the takeoff. Bit more right rudder, just like that. And that is all the same in the UK. I mean, that view is just insane. Just to think that every time they go flying, they get to view that. Honestly blows my mind. I don't really know what to say to be honest. That is a dream view I've been to Dubai a few times and I've loved every second of being there the views the skyline is beautiful I mean in England. We just have a lot of fields. It's really nothing special But that is gorgeous I couldn't even imagine flying and viewing that every day And I mean the weather in Dubai as people know weather in UK isn't always the greatest Especially December this time of year and I assume in Dubai It's going to be a lot better all year round So you'll probably get a lot more flying done and definitely a lot less Cancellations due to weather. Hello YouTube Here we are time for the landing. Let's check out what you can do. Come on. Too much power because we're already a bit low on the speed Roger, we can take the power off towards the end 
given left for is one way. Play one of the one is selling. I start reducing the power. And keep the nose up. Power to idle now. Keep the nose up. Just keep the nose up. There we go. There you go. Oh. That's not too bad to be fair. I'll, gi I'll give him a solid 7 or 8 out of 10. I mean, it was quite hard to judge from inside the cockpit, but we'll give him benefit of the doubt. All right, Sam, well done on the flight on the SR-22. You passed the test. Uh, we'll now send you off to the Phenom, the Brave Phenom 100 multi-engine jet, where you'll fly with John. Let's see what you got. Okay, so now time for him to fly with the Phenom. This is definitely something I'm looking forward to and definitely not something we have here in the UK, especially at my flight school or at any flight school in the UK for that matter. Possibly any flight school in the world, to be honest. And just getting some quick clips there of inside the building, it looks so luxury, so spacious and huge. It must be a dream to go into that building every day. It looks so modern and updated, it looks lovely. And whilst the building I train in is very modern, updated, got loads of computers and tech, I don't know, there's just something about this, you can just tell it's just nice. This is different, this is different than any traditional flying school. This is an academy that's built for an airline pilot. So we graduate students to cater uh, Emirates Airline mainly, and other airlines when we have capacity. So there we go, I assume a lot of their students do actually go directly into Emirates by the sound of it, which is definitely cool if you train there, maybe possibly a fast track into the airline and what an airline it would be to fly for. So this is pretty cool, he's got a sort of ground class now to understand the systems of the SR-22. Obviously it's a new pilot going into an aircraft you've never flown before, it can be quite daunting, especially when you see a lot of buttons, a lot of switches, and don't really know what all of them do. So yeah, whilst that's very cool, and it may even benefit your understanding a little bit, again, I don't really think it's necessary. You really don't need anything like that. A simple PowerPoint explaining the aircraft is more than enough. And then again, with a bit of flying experience, you work most things out. And then, of course, your instructor for anything you can't. So again, looking at the classrooms, as well as that computer sort of room for the entrance exams, and we have those in my academy, and they look very similar. Possibly these ones are a little bit more spread out and a little bit more spacious. At the end of the day, it's all about the teaching, and I'm sure they've got great teachers, as do we. But again, not too dissimilar from the ones we have here. I already have a private license from the US. Would I able to join? Unfortunately, Sam, no. We take people right to the beginning, and we train them all the way from zero hours to get an integrated ATPL, and then we send them off to there, hopefully to an airline job. So that's pretty interesting. They don't take any students by the sounds of it who've already got some qualification like a PPL. They want people with zero hours right from the ground up. $180,000, two years, you have to do it back from scratch. Even I have a private license and all that. So why would people still come to EFTA? You must have some sort of advantage, right? So $180,000. That is not cheap. For context, my flight school was just short of £100,000. And this included all the stuff like the accommodation, all the flights and ground school exams. But then again, you can understand where this extra 80000 comes from. Flying these Fenon 100s cannot be cheap and that is definitely a huge expense. Flying out of your private airfield as well, they've got to pay for that somehow. And whilst I'm sure they've got a lot of funding behind it, they do need to make a profit somehow. So I guess that's what the extra 80000 is for. The difference here is you're not just a flight school. We train cadets to become airline pilots. I like how he keeps reiterating that they're not just any flight school. They're a flight school to make their students become airline pilots and nothing short of. However, with an integrated course in the UK, this is very similar. The whole aim is to get you into those commercial jets for an airline and nothing else. And additionally, if you pass out of EFTA, Emirates normally requires a first officer to, to apply for the job of first officer. You need to have a minimum of 2,500 hours of flying experience. However, if you graduate from EFTA, they will put you through the selection process and if you're successful, they will recruit you to the right seat of a 777 at this point with 250 hours of flying. So if you like to fly on the 777, this might be a fast track place to come. I mean, that is crazy to even understand. The fact that you could have 250 hours flight time and be in the right hand first officer's seat of a 777 is absolutely crazy. I want to make things clear, but I get the impression what they're not saying is it doesn't guarantee you you're going to be in the right hand seat of a 777 just straight away. If I was a recruiter, I would definitely prefer someone having 2,500 hours over 250. So yes, whilst it's possible, maybe unlikely, I'm not sure though.
But for me, I wouldn't just go there just because you want to be in the right-hand seat of a 777 on your first job. And it's always good to start on a smaller aircraft and work your way up. You'll get a lot more experience flying short haul and doing a lot more landings and more sectors than you will from just sitting in the cockpit in the cruise majority of the time in a 777. This morning we're going to go for a quick flight in the Phantom 100 EV. So the difference between the EV and the original 100 is mainly the G3000 cockpit with the touchscreen displays and uh, we can set up synthetic vision if we want to. Alright, so now time to fly the Phenom and just that inside the cockpit, G3000, that is nice. Not necessary, I feel like it is very over the top and obviously you're paying for this luxury, that extra money, that is what it's going for to get this awesome Phenom experience. For most people, they won't fly a jet until it's their first airline job. For these guys, they are flying jets in their training. But for our twin flying, we fly DA-42s. Again, nice aircraft, and they do the job. Really good fun to fly, and all you need at the end of the day. Okay, super exciting. Was a four zero Quebec, wind one seven zero degrees eight knots, runway one three. Clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway one three four zero Quebec. All right, so time to take off in the Phenom. Let's see how Sam does on his first ever time taking off. This should be good to watch. You have control, just hold it neutral. Let's keep yourself straight, slide your feet down to the floor. Your heels onto the floor. You always down the floor. Alright, V1 and rotate. Rotate, raise the nose. Up, 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 up. Alright, positive climb. Here's coming up. I mean, that does look good fun to fly, and I am very jealous, wishing I could do that. But again, like I said, I'm sure these opportunities will grant to myself in the future flying bigger jets for airlines. So don't be disheartened if you're not flying a jet in your training. It is not a necessity and by no means important. Of course, if you are looking to become an airline pilot, these things will happen when you are there. You will be flying passengers in huge planes, and much bigger than that. But at the end of the day, it does look really good fun to fly. How many hours usually they work on the Phantom? Uh, it's about uh, 20 missions, so uh, 30 to 40 hours on the Phantom. And then they do a MCC course as well, which is eight simulator missions of four hours each. So it's uh, another you know, like, like 32 hours or so on the sim. What, what's MCC stand for? Multi-crew coordination. So by the sounds of it, they're actually doing their MCC on the Phenom 100 as well. Whereas here in England, we actually do our MCC on the A320. But that is just the simulator. And will be probably the last thing you do on your course. All right, once you get to about here, you can ignore the pappies. Just look at your touchdown zone and fly into it. Roger. Alright, time for the landing. Let's see how he does. I can see the instructor's got his hand on the throttle, so I assume he's going to be doing most of the work. But let's see how he does. If you need a flare, just call out or just don't do it around now. Don't worry, I'll, I'll right. save my life. It's okay. 200. I don't think there's many instructors around the world who, when they're in that plane, will let you crash with them in it. 100. What about here? Not just come down at all. If your eyes are outside looking up. Little flare and freeze, just freeze. Let the airplane touch down. Easy. Oh wow! All right. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. It looked like the instructor was helping him quite a bit, but again, a really good landing. I love the way he was talking him through it, and again, that's very similar to how it's done when you're taught to land here in the UK. The happening place is the canteen here, and my understanding is you get free breakfast, yeah. lunch, yeah. and dinner, yeah. free meals a day, dessert, coffee, everything here, yeah. and you don't have to pay for it. No. <laughs> Nothing at all. So yeah, that's something we actually don't have at my flight school in the UK. Not sure many flight schools will give this to you actually. The fact they get three meals a day, coffee, tea and all of that stuff. Whilst there's a coffee machine in my academy, three meals a day is not being served. That is definitely a huge bonus. They don't have to pay for any of it as well. And it does look like really nice food. This is quite amazing. And the point is the food is so good. I'm happy that we don't have to pay for it. Yeah, I recognize. These are the Emirates Airline catering. Yeah. This is the same catering as the lounge yeah. in the Emirates Airline. So they've got the same catering as the Emirates lounges. I mean, I can only assume that's pretty good food. Hey Sam, come see the accommodation please. Yeah, I want to check out yeah, the accommodation yeah, yeah. here. All right, time to view the accommodation. So let's see what they've got in store. Please come. Have this me. is your accommodation yeah, here. Yeah, this is my room. Wow. Wow, this is just like a hotel room, hotel studio. Yeah. Yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah. This is like an Emirates Airline Hotel, Emirates University Hotel. Yeah, huh. so we get the housekeeping, so they come twice a week to clean the rooms. 
they do the bedding, they do the floor and they clean the restrooms and all that, yeah. So looking at the accommodation, the actual rooms themselves look so nice. Looks like they've got their own little kitchen area, but again, they don't need a huge kitchen as they get three meals a day. They've got the bedroom, a little lounge area, and a bathroom each. So now at my accommodation, as you know, I've got a bedroom, of course, as well as a bathroom, and I actually share with one other person. So where I'm staying is two people per flat. And actually, the flats are quite big, so we've got a nice living room area, a nice kitchen area for cooking, as well as a pretty good sized bedroom each with a bathroom each as well. Well, thank you so much for giving me this experience in your flight training academy. It's world class, and I want a job now at Emirates because I flew the Cirrus, I flew the Phenom, I went through the class, I went through the simulator. Now, can I join Emirates Airline? Please do. <laughs> <laughs> this is state-of-the-art stuff, top technology, the best planes there are, own private airfield, catering, and a beautiful accommodation as well. However, it does come at a price. It's not cheap, but all in all, Emirates Fly Academy, 10 out of 10, you couldn't really ask for much more. And guys, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you click this video here so you can see what my training flight before my CPL was like.